we know how to compute complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. It works the same as in the real case. The computations, however, can be slightly more difficult because you will have to do row reduction with complex numbers. Let us look at a relatively small 2x2 example in this video. So let's uh, have the following matrix a equals 0, 1 minus 1 minus 2. Uh, we want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So first we want to find the characteristic polynomial, so the determinant of a minus lambda times i2. So subtract a lambda from the diagonal and we have the determinant over here. Put the determinant as minus lambda times minus 2 minus lambda over there, minus 1 times minus 2, so plus 2. So we get the 2 lambda plus lambda squared, and we keep the 2 over there. And there we have our characteristic polynomial. In order to find the eigenvalues, we have to find the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. So we set lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 2 to 0, complete the square. Uh, lambda squared plus 2 lambda equals uh, lambda plus 1 squared minus 1. So plus the 2 yields an additional plus 1. And then we can solve this equation, put the plus 1 to the other side. We get lambda plus 1 squared equals minus 1. So we have lambda plus 1 equals plus or minus i, or lambda equals minus 1 plus or minus i. And we have our two eigenvalues, lambda 1 minus 1 plus i, and lambda 2 minus 1 minus i. And as you see, they are each other's complex conjugate. On to the eigenspace, to the eigenvectors. For that, we have to compute a minus lambda 1 times i2 first. So we get the uh, matrix uh, 1 minus i, minus 2 and 1 stay where they are. And they have minus 2 minus uh, a minus 1 plus i, so that yields a minus 2 minus minus 1, so minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 minus i over there. Uh, and then we have to do row reduction. Add the zeros on the right hand side and do row reduction in order to find the null space. And that's kind of annoying because we want one over here. We can do a little trick though. We can multiply the first row by 1 plus i. Because what do we get then? On the first element, we get 1 minus i times 1 plus i. That 1 minus i times 1 plus i is 1 plus i minus i. Those cancel out. Minus i squared. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. So then we get a 2 over here, and the second element is easy, it's just 1 plus i. And then we see again uh, the first and second row are the same. So the second row disappears, we get a row of zeros, as we should have, because we have eigenvectors. We wouldn't have a row of zeros, we would only find a trivial solution, c2 equals 0 and c1 equals 0. And then it cannot be an eigenvector. So you know in advance that you should get a row of zeros, but always do this row reduction step because it helps you to check whether all your computations were correct. Suppose you have the eigenvalues incorrect and you uh, come here and you just erase a row, then you also have the eigenvectors incorrect and it gets worse and worse. Now, if you do the row reduction step, you notice that your eigenvalues were incorrect and you can uh, correct everything. So never just put a row of zeros there, always do the row reduction step because it's a nice check. Then we can continue with solving the system. C2 free. And then the first equation yields 2C1 uh, plus 1 plus i times C2 equals 0 or 2C1 equals minus 1 minus i times C2. So let's take a convenient C2. For example, if we take C2 equals 2, then we get a 2 over here and C1 equals minus 1 minus i. So there we have our first eigenvector and the second one. Okay, we could do a minus lambda 2 times i2 and then do the row reduction. But we can also use the fact that that one has to be the complex conjugate of the first one. So we can find our second eigenvector immediately. And uh, we can uh, write down the full eigenspace. A, uh, eigenspace of lambda 1 is the span of v1, and the basis for that is the set consisting of v1 and the basis of the eigenspace pertaining to lambda 2 is the uh, set of just v2. So there we have the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors, and of course, as a final check, you can always compute a times v1 and lambda, times lambda 1 times v1, and those have to be equal. So as you see, finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the complex case is the same as in the real case. It's only a bit more work.